So this year's Nelson Mandela annual lecture will be delivered by former International Criminal Court Prosecutor Fatou Bensouda. Now, she's the first African and the first woman to serve on the ICC. Uh, Bensouda and her office have been nominated for the 2021 Nobel Peace Prize in recognition of her work in advancing international criminal justice without fear or favor. The theme for this year's lecture is the rule of law, international criminal justice, and sustainable development. That lecture is said to be delivered later today. But in the lead-up to that, let's bring in the Nelson Mandela Foundation CEO, Silo Hatang, who joins us now via our video link for a sense of what to expect. Silo, always great chatting to you. Thanks very much indeed for making time for us this morning. I wonder if we can begin perhaps with just discussing where we are insofar as this particular gathering is concerned. The event in and of itself is put together with the hopes of trying to ignite some kind of social discussion around issues of perhaps national or international importance. Almost 20 years down the line, do you get a sense that you're getting it right? Thank you so much, uh, Ayanda. Good morning. And I think for, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's important to note that the, the, the lecture has been setting a tone in many respects when it comes to, um, uh, to issues of uh, social justice and uh, uh, issues that need to be considered uh, and uh, debated at any given time. So I think we have made some headway in terms of uh, making sure that there's an impact that's uh, felt by the lecture. If, if I used one example of, uh, of uh, Thomas Piketty, um, when he delivered his lecture, he was talking about uh, inequality. And we um, subsequently looked at the issue of uh, uh, access to land, um, there were dialogues that we then had. Uh, we also looked at issues of uh, early childhood development. When it comes to early childhood development, we have now uh, helped with government, uh, worked with government to make sure that all early childhood development, both formal and informal, are found around the country. So that was the impact of uh, Thomas Piketty, um, uh, that lecture then saying, you must start them young. Make sure that you break the back of inequality by making sure that the little ones get good foundational education. Yeah. The long rehearsed retort, if you like, against things like lectures is that it's just mere postulation that doesn't really result in any kind of material change on the ground. I mean, uh, as we prepare for this 19th annual run of this particular lecture, how high up your list of considerations is something like that, especially when you consider what to talk about this time around? Well, I under the, the, the difficulty is um, uh, you find people who only follow the lecture on the day. Uh, they just watch the lecture after the lecture uh, has been broadcast. They then don't follow up to see what happens. And I've just given you an example mm. of what uh, uh, the Piketty lecture, which uh, dates back to 2015, uh, 2014, um, or run about there. And uh, six years later, we're still at it to make sure that uh, we, we follow up on some of the issues that uh, uh, Thomas Piketty raised. Um, when we hosted um, uh, the UNSG, for example, last year, when he was talking about uh, how COVID has impacted people when it comes to inequality, we've now been making sure that we're, we are part of the campaigns uh, that, looked at, that look at vaccination and how uh, we must build a more equal society around vaccination. So most of these uh, uh, dialogues that we have, the, 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 the lectures that we have, are not just talk shops. They then have follow-up uh, um, dialogues that we have, like this one that we're having today. In the next day or two, we're going to have um, a follow-up with her again, with uh, Madame Ben Souda, where we'll be looking at uh, inequality as it relates to um, uh, issues of race. Uh, what do we deal with? What do we do when it comes to rule of law and race? So mm -hmm. I think it's important that we we uh, showcase. I guess maybe we should be showcasing more of our work to say these are the, follow, the, the fruits of uh, such and such a lecture. Yeah. You know, the, the topic of, of this year's lecture perhaps couldn't be more timely. Um, but I do wonder at which stage conversations around who gets to listen to the lecture can also feature prominently. In my mind, for instance, those who are in Afghanistan would love to listen to uh, Madam Bansoda, as, as you put it, speaking about international criminal justice and the likes, but the likelihood of that happening is, is zero to nil. How do we ensure that we don't leave these lectures as 
perhaps just echo chambers, um, especially because it would be a bit, ironically, of an injustice, it feels, wouldn't it, if the people who stand to benefit the most from the lecture sadly don't even get a chance to hear it. That's a very important uh, uh, point that you're making there. That's why we have been uh, using all kinds of platforms to make sure that we raise awareness. We've been working with um, our international relations uh, department, uh, for example, to make sure that uh, the lecture is uh, spread further. Uh, we are um, uh, grateful to, for example, our embassy out in the Netherlands, uh, Ambassador Madonzela, for example, who has been critical uh, in, in making sure that the lecture is carried forward um, in other platforms. I think it's important that I also note that um, uh, the lecture will be broadcast, uh, carried live by AP, uh, which, as you know, um, Associated Press will then be giving it to other broadcasters globally, um, because this is the first lecture that uh, Madam Bensuda will be giving uh, since her retirement from the ICC. And I think um, the, the world, we are told, um, that the world is uh, awaiting to hear from her. What were her key lessons, having led this very important body? How did she make sure that those who felt that they were above the law, and it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, interesting that you used Afghanistan, for example, that she tried to hold uh, the U.S. soldiers accountable for their actions in Afghanistan. And I think it's important that we, we then give uh, uh, those people an opportunity to listen to this uh, uh, to the lecture. That's why it will also be carried on our website um, at uh, events uh, dot, uh, at, at events uh, uh, at nelsonmandela.org, which is our website. Events dot uh, also will also be carrying it, and um, and also on our Twitter feed and uh, on on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And all these platforms will be um, enabling others to be able to watch the lecture from wherever they are. Mm -hmm. And by the way, Newsroom Africa will also be carrying the lecture live. So. We're grateful to you, too. Absolutely. I wonder, Silo, whether or not um, things like perhaps any kind of backlash towards the foundation around these lectures is something you're worried about at all. And I ask this particular question because every time I hear of the International Criminal Court, I can't help but think of how, I think it was Omar al-Bashir was in South Africa at some stage. He had been wanted by the, uh, the ICC. And I think there was a kind of directive to South Africa to ensure that they're able to prevent Omar Abashir essentially from leaving the country. Long story short, Omar Abashir left the country, and to this day, it almost feels like there's been no kind of accountability for that. With this court at the center of the lecture today, how much, if you like, hard talking do you imagine can actually happen for countries who've dropped the ball insofar as their meaningful participation in the institution itself is concerned? Uh, I, I, I think uh, uh, you're raising another critical question about our role as a constitutional uh, country. And I think that role has been questioned many times. Positions that we take, for example, at the UN, where we would uh, be seen to be voting uh, the wrong way, um, according to uh, those who are human rights practitioners globally. And, and I think um, in terms of... Uh, our, our constitutional democracy and uh, in, in, in relation to international relations, we need to also be looking at that. And uh, when we spoke to Madame Bensouda uh, in preparation for the lecture, she said she was hoping that South Africa realizes that she, uh, South Africa is carrying such a heavy load on her shoulder to show that she's a leader uh, in the continent and that we can help uh, make sure that uh, the continent uh, doesn't abuse rights, um, but also that uh, it's not just for South Africa uh, uh, to do that, but that we influence other international bodies, um, international countries to also do the same. Um, we have received some backlash for our lectures previously. Um, we've been called names, and uh, in, uh, in one instance, we even had to um, uh, go to, to explain ourselves, or there was an attempt for us to explain ourselves uh, to authorities about some of the decisions that we take about the lecture. Um, we have not shown any sense of uh, fear uh, for taking positions that we take, and we will not stop, uh, because I think it's when you create these platforms, as Madiba told uh, my predecessor, uh, Ahmad Dango, that you need to then be having dialogues, not with, um, 
to be a friend who always just uh, wants to uh, uh, project messages that uh, people want to hear, but rather to make these platforms uh, f uh, for the unsayable to be said, uh, for people to hear that uh, South Africa, for example, is fast becoming a violent democracy that's eating its own children. And maybe we should pause and, uh, and also reflect on the passing of, of Nositelo Mtebeni, um, who passed away after being uh, viciously attacked and uh, her body dismembered. And to her family, we're saying the lecture is also directed at you uh, to say that uh, we want the rule of law to apply to the killer of your child, but that South African government must make um, South Africa a much safer place, uh, that criminality shouldn't take uh, root. Um, so the rule of law must then be seen uh, to be at the core of our society. Absolutely. We can never have too much space for open dialogue. Uh, thanks very much indeed for speaking to us. Really do appreciate your time. Siloha Tang is the CEO of the Nelson Mandela Foundation.